Senate file number 174, an act relating to the financing and operation of state government. There is an amendment. Uh, the clerk will report the amendment. Knobloch moves to amend Senate file 174, the second engrossment as follows, and the amendment is coded DEA 264. The member from Sherburne, Representative Knobloch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Members of the House, this is the House language that we are substituting into the Senate file that came over from the Senate. And I know we've got a couple of other amendments here that we're going to be dealing with, but just uh, briefly, I think it would make sense for me at this time to actually run through what is in the House bill. Members, as I think everyone knows, this is the deficiency bill. Uh, this is a bill to fund a few agencies that, for various reasons, need funding or they will not be able to make it to the end of this fiscal year ending June 30th. Uh, in the Department of Human Services, there is $246,000 for the Minnesota Food Assistance Program. Enrollments have exceeded expectations in that uh, program. Uh, the State Hospital in St. Peter is the, by far the largest appropriation in this bill at $10,437,000. They have accrued significant uh, additional personnel expenses because of some uh, court orders uh, and license orders that they're under. Uh, because of some other security situations there, they've also been forced to spend some significant funds on upgrading security for the staff, uh, for example, uh, additional cameras and hallways. Uh, the health department members has $2,891,000 dealing with uh, the uh, Ebola issue that uh, came to fore last fall, $891,000 for the health department itself, in the extra expenditures that they incurred, and $2 million for health providers across the state that are identified in the bill for the uh, expenses that they incurred in getting ready in case we did have an Ebola epidemic in Minnesota. We have uh, funds. Members, uh, we have $69,000 in general fund money and about $500,000 and other special fund money uh, for uh, overtime and additional compensation for conservation officers of the Department of Natural Resources. We have $1,350,000 for the Minnesota Zoo, an amount that's down $150,000 from the original request, uh, which uh, the zoo has agreed to after we had some additional scrutiny of that uh, particular program. And then there's a reduction, members, of $40,000 to the three agencies uh, that did otherwise not get reductions, the Department of Human Services, Department of Health, Department of Natural Resources. Uh, this members uh, was added in as a uh, amendment uh, by Representative Druskowski in Ways and Means to reflect the approximate amount that the commissioners of those departments were getting in additional pay increases underneath the salary increases we learned about from the governor after the bill had been introduced. Uh, members, I'd uh, appreciate your support on this amendment to substitute the House language. Any discussion on the motion to substitute the House language? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion prevails. There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Peterson moves to amend Senate File 174, the second engrossment as amended as follows, and the amendment is coded A28. The member from Dakota, Representative Peterson, to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. The amendment that you have before you, in essence, returns the legislative approval for salaries of executive branch uh, employees, such as the governor's commissioners and other appointed offices. It does a couple of things. First, it restores the legislative approval. 
It also increases transparency to the public and it also um, goes back to the previous practice that this body has had for a very long time. So I ask for your support. It, there was bipartisan support for this uh, amendment prior to this conversation here, and I ask for your approval. Thank you. Discussion on the amendment. Uh, the member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members of the House, I consider this a friendly amendment and would appreciate your support. Further discussion on the amendment. Uh, the member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Peterson yield to a question? She will yield. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Peterson, does this amendment affect the cap? I understand there's a cap in law on how high the governor now can raise the salaries. I think it's 133% of his own salary. Is that going to remain in law, or does this amendment affect that at all? Yeah. The member from Dakota, Representative Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Liebling, this bill does not address that provision, so that provision remains. The member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Representative Peterson, even if we adopted this so that the legislature has to, has to approve it, it still can't go above 133 percent. So it seems to me that this is kind of much ado about nothing. I don't know if you want to respond to that. I'm not really asking you to yield, but I mean, it just seems to me that it doesn't even do anything because already, with or without this, the uh, salaries can't go above 133%. There is an amendment to the amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Knobloch moves to amend the Peterson Amendment to Senate file number 174 as follows, and the amendment to the amendment is coded A55. Uh, the member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, members, uh, I think now is an appropriate time to take up the A55 amendment to the amendment. Uh, this basically does two things. Uh, first of all, it conforms with the language the Senate put on to the deficiency bill last week in that uh, what will happen is, uh, okay. and, and it does that, and then it establishes effective dates. Uh, let me explain exactly what this means uh, in terms of the amendment. Uh, the commissioners that have received pay increases upon the effective date of this law will no longer be given those salary increases. So the salary increases the governor had handed out will now effectively be withdrawn. Those commissioners will go back to their old rate of pay. Uh, they will go back to their old rate of pay until the end of the fiscal year, as had been proposed in the Senate. Uh, then as of uh, July 2nd, 2015, right after the start of the new fiscal year, uh, the governor will lose his authority that was given him in the last two years to unilaterally, by just giving notice to the legislature, increase uh, his commissioners and other uh, salaries. Uh, so I know there's been a great deal of discussion about the uh, size of the governor's salary increases. A lot of people have been concerned about that. A lot of people, particularly I think on our side of the aisle, have been concerned about this uh, change in the uh, long-standing tradition of the legislature that was changed a couple years ago where the governor was given sole authority to uh, increase uh, commissioner salaries. Uh, with this amendment and with the Peterson Amendment, uh, we'll now have that authority back and the raises that were granted by the governor to his commissioners will be decreased back to where they had been. Discussion on the amendment. The member from Hennepin, Representative Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask for a roll call. Roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll.
Clerk will close the roll. There being 99 ayes and 27 nays, the amendment is adopted. There's another amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Winkler moves to amend the Peterson Amendment as amended to Senate file number 174, and the amendment is coded A33. The member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to withdraw this amendment. Representative Winkler withdraws the amendment. There's another amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Schoen moves to amend the Peterson Amendment as amended to Senate file number 174, and the amendment is coded A38. The member from Washington, Representative Schoen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to withdraw the amendment. Representative Schoen withdraws the amendment. Further discussion to the A28 amendment, the Peterson Amendment, as amended. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of adoption of the A28 amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate file number 174, as amended. The member from Dakota, Representative Wills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I won't belabor the point, but I wanted to just remind everyone how important it is to me to be able to have the funding in this bill for the Minnesota Zoo, which is in my district. And um, due to the unforeseen circumstances that they faced with the weather last year and thus resulting in lower than projected turnout for their visitors and uh, thus affecting their revenue stream and a few other factors, um, they came up with a, a budget deficiency that we're addressing in this bill. And so I'm, I'm proud to support this bill and, and make sure we can get the Minnesota Zoo the funding that they need. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, Representative Dean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And will the uh, Representative Willis yield to a question? She will yield. Uh, Representative Dean. So I guess my question to Ms. Wills, in 2014, uh, you voted against supporting the zoo for capital investment for what would be an investment for the state, and now you're speaking in favor of supporting Point of order, Mr. Million. Speaker. Uh, Representative Anderson, for what purpose um, do you rise? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I raise for a point of order, and you're, somebody's going to have to help me out here, but I know in Masons, we uh, don't allow for the questioning of a member's motives, and I believe that just happened here. And if you give me a moment, I can find it, so. No, I can't ask. At this point, we'll just remind members to uh, remember that the, uh, the bill before us is what's being debated here and not the personalities uh, of, of those here in the chamber. Uh, Representative Dean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so let me go quickly to my question. Um, have you had a change in heart since 2014? The member from Dakota, Representative Wills. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Representative Anderson, state your point of order. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I found it. It is. Um, Motives of members, it is on section 125 of Masons and personalities not allowed in debate. There's also section 124 of Masons. In a debate, a member must confine remarks to the question before the House and avoid personalities. Uh. Thank you. I'm going to decline to rule on this, uh, but I will remind members that uh, the, the personalities here are not what's being debated, and the motives of our, of our members are not what's being debated. Uh, it's the issue before us. So uh, I'll return to you, Representative Dean. If you have a question about the bill, uh, you have the floor. Um, not at this time, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further discussion on the bill as amended?
The member from Nicollet, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. It's, it's my desire to talk about the bill itself. Uh, there's been a lot of politics surrounding this bill, and, and it's raised, uh, that those politics, I think, have raised a lot of eyebrows across the state of Minnesota, but nowhere more than in St. Peter, Minnesota. And the eyebrows are raised really because of the delay in getting this bill to the floor. So it's this is a good day in St. Peter. Uh, because that ten, the $10.4 million in the deficiency payments are flat out needed. I want to remind you, and I, it's my assessment, and I think it's really fair to say that the Security Hospital in St. Peter is one of the most challenging places to work in Minnesota, arguably the most challenging place. And I would also argue that it's also one of the most complex places to manage in Minnesota. And finally, getting this funding to St. Peter is going to help us uh, address those deep challenges that we have. The money is being used to improve, was used and will continue to be used to get after a very challenging problem related to safety and security for the patients who are in the hospital and certainly our state employees who work there. The job's not done. I warn you folks, there's still more to be done. But this bill is important to taking the step to continuing the work that we are doing to make sure that our state employees have a safe, safe workplace and our, and our patients are safe. So I'm looking forward to voting for this bill, and I know my neighbors in St. Peter are looking forward to the funding coming home. Thank you very much. Further discussion on the bill as amended. Uh, the member from Wabasha, Representative Driskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members, I stand to uh, speak against this bill. Um, we have before us a bill that um, was uh, brought forward and, and purported to be a deficiency bill. Now, members, a deficiency bill is when something comes that is unforeseen by government, something that they couldn't plan for, something that they couldn't manage for. But as we look at the details of this bill, um, I look at the uh, Ebola section, I can, I can except that's something that Minnesota and that the Department of Human Services couldn't plan for. That's a deficiency component in my mind. We look at some of the other areas though. I get letters from people who work at the security hospital in St. Peter and they tell me that this is not about pouring more money on the program. This is, not, this is something that has been happening for a long time, that the agency should add a better sense of what was going on, and that pouring another $10 million, or what, I think it's $10 million, onto the problem is not necessarily going to solve the issue. We have before us more requests from the Department of Natural Resources, who came to us in 2012 telling us that they needed more money from the people of Minnesota in the forms of fees. They raised the, we raised the fees in order to accommodate their requests for more enforcement officers. We had the governor and we had the legislature approve, we had the governor and the unions approving union contract increases, huge increases, the last biennium. We remember that. About half the employees got a 7% increase over two years. The other half got about a 14% increase over two years. And what do we hear from the DNR? But we need more money because the compensation is costing us too much. We didn't plan for these compensation increases. The Minnesota Zoo, it's the same thing. They need more money for compensation than we gave them in the full 15% increase in the size of state government that we saw in the form of an increase the last two years. We gave them the hugest increase in the history of the state of Minnesota. And they said they need more and they couldn't plan for it with that huge increase. Members, this is not a deficiency bill. This is a mismanagement bill. We have agencies before us represented here who did not manage for the realities that they knew were before them 
and that we hired them, the people of Minnesota hired them to plan for. And then we have the governor coming and raising their salaries by huge increases when, when some of them are mismanaging their particular departments for our state. Members, it's time to say no to some of this. And I understand the, the broker deal that came as part of this proposal. And actually, some of it in, improved. We put the, uh, uh, thank you, Representative Knobloch, for your leadership. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for your leadership. We did put, with this bill, some authority back in the hands of the legislature to a chief executive who operated in a way that many people in Minnesota saw to be crony government at its worst. The shortfall members in this bill and this solution is that the crony government will have an opportunity to be reinstated on July 1st. And members, with the passage of this bill, and I assume the bill's gonna pass, all eyes will be on the governor on July 1st. The question will be, will the government, governor again enact huge salary increases to his political appointees who are not hired or brought forward through a selection process because they are the best in the field, because they've been interviewed and they're the best chief executive for their area. These are political appointments who knew the salary for the entire duration of their term when they agreed to take the position. So members, uh, it's with mixed emotions as I look at this bill. As I mentioned, there were some improvements in it, but on balance, um, it is not the bill that is in the best interests of Minnesota. It is not the bill that encourages our government to offer restraint and strength in its management of its agencies. It's a bill that falls much, much short of what Minnesotans expect. And I encourage you to vote no on this particular bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I, I wanna take a moment to recognize our conservation officers, uh, peace officers who are out doing the work. Uh, Representative Drazkowski, they've already done this work. This bill compensates them for the work they've already done. Not what the governor did or not what somebody else has done, but what the conservation officers, the folks who enforce our game and fish laws, protect the resource for Minnesotans, what they've done, what they've done, not what they're going to do or what they will do, but what they've done. And so they're out there when we're, we may have our head on the pillow tonight, sleeping soundly and those conservation officers are out there enforcing against poaching, taking of the game and fish that belong to all of us, protecting our waters, rescuing people, being involved when there's an incident or an accident that might be out in, in our state parks or trails. So I hope, Representative Drazkowski, you're not being critical of the folks who do that work. Uh, the work that's already been done that this deficiency bill is providing for. The member from Washington, Representative Dean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. And I would like to speak in support of the deficiency bill. Um, and in one specific aspect of that, and that is the, uh, the hospitals of the state of Minnesota that stepped up in the Ebola effort uh, very, very tragic situation happening in Texas uh, where we had folks with Ebola showing up at the hospitals. We had to immediately uh, respond to that in Minnesota and all across the country. What are we going to do? The federal government didn't really know how to handle this. Our hospitals stepped up like they always do um, to address this very difficult problem. But what do we do when patients come and how do we treat them? How do we know if they have this? We really don't know. We have to monitor them. So our hospitals actually stepped up, trained their people, developed protocols, and did this. And as Representative Drazkowski correctly points out, 
That is an unforeseen condition that no one would have known was going to happen, uh, but this happened. And it's for reasons like that that I think governors really do need authority and to go out and to be able to respond to emergencies in our agencies and to be able to respond to try to correct these things and to keep the government serving the citizens of the state of Minnesota. But what happened this year was we had a deficiency bill come through and at the very same time we had a governor that unilaterally decided to raise the salaries of the very highest paid people in the government unilaterally. So on the one hand we're saying that we can't keep our hospitals open, we're, our zoo are going to have to not feed the animals as what was brought up in the uh, committee uh, by one of the members and was later corrected by, uh, by folks at the zoo. Uh, we're going to have to do all of these drastic measures because we don't have enough money and at the very same time we're raising the salaries of the very highest paid executives in his, in his agencies. And the average person across the state of Minnesota who's struggling to pay bills says this doesn't make any sense. This is out of touch. This is out of touch with my daily life in Minnesota. And that's what we've come to see. And we saw the embarrassment on the cover of the paper every day when the leadership, uh, when the governor and the leadership in the Senate can't agree, that gets sideways, it winds up on the front page of the paper. We all go home to our districts and they say, what is going on down there? You guys are so out of touch. How can you be that out of touch with Main Street in your district? Well, we need to return to a time when we give governor's broad authority to be able to respond to these emergencies when they can shake hands with the leaders of the legislature and make a deal and come here and we can back them up. That's what I want to see. I want a deal that I can back up and I can take home to my district. And I want a governor and I want leaders that can shake hands and make a deal and put the best interests of Minnesota first and not embarrass the state of Minnesota, embarrass this legislature with this kind of behavior. I think you deserve that, we all deserve that, the state of Minnesota deserves that. But I think this d bill deserves our support. We ought, we ought to be able to get behind deficiency bills and disasters. We step behind our leaders when they step in to help the citizens of the state of Minnesota. I think today is the right day to do the right thing. If we've seen a week of embarrassment, today start doing the right thing. The member from Blue Earth, Representative Considine. Um, I'm standing to support the bill. I believe I am the only person here that actually worked in the security hospital. Um, and when I twist wrong, my ribs remind me that I broke three of them there. When you see me staggering, it's because I had a knee operation while I was there. It is an extremely dangerous place to work. And quite frankly, you cannot imagine it. People have said, oh, I can only imagine what you went through. No, you can't. And as far as things being unexpected, those happen on a daily occurrence there. The staff there that work there are dedicated, but they are in danger every day, and I am proud to support this bill. Thank you. The member from Olmsted, Representative Quam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. And I think we all can find something in here that we think is justified and we can debate other things. I'm in favor of this bill. I just wish when the unexpected things happen that we actually had a sufficiency bill. Where are the departments and the rest of the government that things happened and they didn't go through their money? I'd like to show just how effective government can be and have a sufficiency bill which shows how we've done due diligence, great fiscal responsibility for our citizens and delivered the value and the service with saving some money. So I will be voting green here, but I'll be waiting for that sufficiency bill. The member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Droskowski yield to a question? He will yield. Representative Winkler. 
Representative Drozkowski, I was a little bit confused in your remarks. I thought that you said you were against this bill because it spent too much money and that you thought Representative Knobloch had done something good to the bill, which I'm not really totally clear about what's good about it uh, in his amendments. As I read this bill as amended for passage today, the legislature is authorizing the governor to make a pretty substantial pay increase for commissioners this year. Isn't that correct? The member from Wabash, Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and thank you, Representative Winkler. As I understand the bill here today, uh, the bill doesn't affect the governor's authority to do it. It uh, simply limits it after the 2nd of July and um, uh, leaves open uh, current authority that the governor has. And so that's what I uh, understand uh, the bill to do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Representative Drozkowski, I think you said basically yes. If this bill passes and becomes law, a substantial pay increase for commissioners will go into effect this year uh, with the blessing of the legislature. I just wanted to make that pretty clear on the record that that's what voting for this bill will do. And personally, I, I, you know, I think $150,000 a year to manage a $40 billion budget isn't an outrageous uh, salary. But I wanted to be clear that the legislature itself is ratifying the governor's pay increase by passing this today. Further discussion on the bill. The member from Wabasha, Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would just like to uh, offer a correction to Representative Winkler. Uh, this bill does not, and the legislature is not with passage of this bill, as I understand it, ratifying uh, any uh, increase that the governor would provide for those salaries of those highest paid people in the state of Minnesota uh, that he would have the authority to on July 1st uh, to still make the decision. That's going to be his decision as the governor of our state uh, whether he is going to extend to those highest paid people uh, while the people of Minnesota are experiencing and have since between 2007 and 2013 a $4,320 4, decrease in their median family income, he's going to provide or could provide, if he does exactly what he did earlier, a full $42,000 increase in the median income of the highest paid people in state government. That's what could happen. So all eyes of Minnesota on July 1st, Representative Winkler, as I understand it, and as I read the bill, will be looking at Governor Dayton and saying and wondering, is he going to be with us or is he going to uh, exercise the same type of crony behavior that we saw him exercise last time? That's what I understand we will be looking at with this bill, and I don't understand it in any way to be uh, a ratification of anything the governor does. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I won't rise again. We're not really in a uh, yield situation, so I appreciate the indulgence. But Representative Druskowski, just to be clear, you're passing on an opportunity to stop the pay increases from happening. The member from Sibley, Representative Grunhagen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the uh, author of the bill, uh, Representative Knobloch, yield for a question? He will yield. Representative Grunhagen. Uh, Representative Knobloch, would, does this bill in any way affect the governor's authority, which he currently has, to give a raise uh, to his, to his uh, commissioners? Uh, we don't have anything to do with that in this bill. This bill simply moves the authority back to us to approve future raises after this six-month period. Is that correct? Representative Knobloch. Mr. Speaker, Representative Grunhagen, uh, what this bill does is sometime in the last two years, the legislature granted the governor authority to make these pay increases. This bill takes back the authority that the legislature has had for many years to make those sorts of pay increases. So now, uh, after July 2nd, 2015, uh, only with legislative support will Governor Dayton or any other future governor be able to make so these uh, sorts of pay increases that were made. Uh, in addition, uh, Representative Grunhagen, uh, the pay increases that the governor did give uh, to these commissioners will now be upon the effective date of this bill 
taken away so these commissioners now will have their salaries lowered back to what they were being paid before. Representative Grunhagen. Yeah, Representative Knobloch would yield for one more question. But effective July... He, he will yield, Representative yeah. Grunhagen. But effective July 1st, the governor still can hand out the raises. But this bill can't prevent it. It simply moves it back after those raises back to the legislature as far as oversight. The member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Grunhagen, uh, this bill leaves the law as it currently exists in place as of July 1st for the date, July 1st, 2015. And the governor has the same authority that he has now that this legislature granted him in the last two years on July 1st to make a pay increase if he so wishes at that time. But, Mr. Speaker, Representative Grunhagen, that is authority that the governor already has that this legislature granted him sometime in the last two years. Uh, it will be up to him whether he chooses to exercise that authority. Uh, this bill, as it's currently amended, reduces the salary of the commissioners, takes away the big pay increases they were given, and then, as of July 2, 2015, gives back to the legislature the authority that they previously had. So this can't happen again. The member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Knobloch yield? He will yield. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Knobloch. I'm looking at the A55 amendment and looking at line uh, 1.12 and at the date July 2nd, 2015. And my question for you is, if the date were July 1st, 2015, would the governor then have the ability or authority to raise uh, pay? The member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Murphy, uh, it is my belief that the answer to your question is no, that the governor on July 1st retains the same authority that the legislature gave him two years ago. Representative Murphy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Representative Knobloch. So if this amendment goes forward in the law today and we take this vote and it says July 2nd, the governor has a day to raise pay. Is that correct? Uh, he will yield. Representative Knobloch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Murphy, on July 1st, the governor would maintain the same authority that he has in the current law right now that this legislature gave him uh, sometime in the last two years. The member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Knobloch. I just I wanted to make sure I understood this because as uh, I am looking this at this, if the amendment said July 1st and not July 2nd, then the governor, under this agreement, would not be able to raise the pay of his commissioners. And if the caucus, your caucus, is not interested in allowing the governor to do that, then I'm not quite sure why you chose July 2nd. The member, he will yield. The member from Sherburn, Representative Knobloch. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, Representative Murphy, uh, I know you were here in the last two years, Representative Murphy. I guess I don't know how you voted on the bill to give this authority to raise pay to the governor, this authority that was given to him that now has created a situation where he's given all these large raises to commissioners. I, I wasn't here, so I don't... Uh, know who voted for it and who voted against it, and I haven't uh, bothered to look through the House Journal to see who did. But I do know this, uh, Representative Murphy, that uh, if you vote for this bill, uh, you are voting to A, reduce and take away the pay increases that were given to the commissioners, and secondly, you are taking back to the legislature the authority to raise pay for commissioners in the future. If you vote against this amendment and this bill, Representative Murphy, you are letting the governor's pay increases stand as they are. And so I think people need to be really clear about what the vote is. The vote uh, to vote no is to let the pay increases stand as they are, let these big pay increases stay in place, 
the vote for the bill is to take the pay increases away from the commissioners give the authority back to the legislature the governor will have the authority that this legislature granted him on july first to do what he wants but members by voting for this bill you are taking away the pay increases that the commissioners have been given and you're taking away the authority that the governor was given by this legislature further discussion on the bill the member from Hennepin representative Thiessen thank you mr. speaker um, I guess first in light of that last exchange I would say I, I actually don't have to look through the House Journal to know representative Knobloch that you voted to raise your own pay uh, in the past uh, so uh, just so that's clear for everybody um, but here's the deal I, I think representative Knobloch is actually misinterpreting this this bill um, what is happening is the, the governor has voted to increase this pay of the commissioners the same commissioners actually that responded uh, as representative Dean you know spoke so strongly about that responded to that Ebola crisis uh, you know represent our Commissioner Ellinger uh, Commissioner Jessen uh, as that was happening uh, they were putting in 24 7 to make sure that we were able to respond to that uh, but we can set that aside for a moment I suppose uh, in the rhetoric that we have here but what this bill does is the governor has raised that pay and on July 1st that decision of the governor to raise the pay goes back into effect on July 2nd you can't stop them you the leg, uh, any further increases will come back to this body but let's be very clear you're freezing them in the language for a particular period of time from Dave enactment to June uh, 30th on July 1st the decision the governor already made to raise pay goes back into effect that is what you read that's what's being ratified when you vote for this bill today let I mean so we can kind of dodge around with nice tricky answers but let's be clear that that's what we're voting on today uh, but more importantly what we're voting on today we've been asking for over a month to pass a deficiency bill it's a bill that is the easiest bill in the state legislature to pass and traditionally has been the very easiest bill it's a no-brainer of a bill and yet it has taken four weeks to pass four weeks for it to come around to actually getting money so we don't have to close the door to st. Peter Hospital four weeks to get the money that representative Dean says is so important and it is important to get out to our hospitals and to get to our Department of Health for responding to the Ebola crisis if this is the direction that this legislature is going to take on the easiest bill in the world to pass I am extremely worried about what's going to happen in the next several months about how this legislature is going to be operate and actually work on behalf of the people of Minnesota this we should have taken up this bill when we rose for an urgency four weeks ago we would have gotten this bill passed and avoided all the drama and not worried about st. Peter closing its doors which is you know imminently going to happen so members I hope as we move forward we can actually do the work of the people of Minnesota not get involved in playing politics about potato fields up in the northwestern part of the state not play politics about any other number of issues and actually do the work of the people of Minnesota we should have passed this bill four weeks ago we're passing it today that's great I'm glad we're finally getting this done but I hope in the future we actually get our work done in a professional way and we don't have to worry about these kind of games in the future the member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and uh, Minority Leader Thiessen. That was, that was quite the speech. Um, I appreciate your wanting to the urgency on the, the deficiency bill. Unfortunately, you may recall last week when the governor and the majority leader in the Senate had a little falling out. The Senate is the one that put the bill on, held the bill up, and thanks to our speaker, who is able to work with the two members who apparently aren't be, the two members of the same party who aren't apparently able to get along thank you to the speaker for being able to broker a deal let's be very clear members the reason that this came before us is because the governor after the DFL controlled legislature granted him the authority last year two years ago to single-handedly raise commissioner salaries he did just that and then Senator Bach came along and showed us just a little bit of fiscal restraint. Luckily, the speaker came in and was able to broker a compromise on this bill so that we could move forward with the deficiency bill. And members, I'm going to vote to support this, and I hope you'll vote to support this bill today. 
But thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Knobloch, for your work on this. Thank you, Representative Peterson, for your common sense amendment on this. This bill has, does some good things. I think the, the funding for the security hospital in St. Peter is important. The Ebola funding is important. And more importantly, what this bill does and why I think it's such a good bill for us today is it restores the authority for the pay increases going forward to the legislature. And I don't know what, what kind of discussions were had over there, but some people made it seem on the other side as though we're doing something that we're giving the authority of the governor to do something today. But let me be clear, this, nothing in this bill authorizes the governor to raise pay. That was already done. We're trying to come up with a compromise so that we can bring that legislative oversight back here. So what this bill does is it, legis it, it restores the legislative oversight, it temporarily freezes the salary increases, and it puts on a, a provision that Representative Drazgowski put that reduced the allocations made to the State Department based on these salary increases. So members, I think this bill brings, deals with the deficiency issue in a responsible manner and it brings some accountability back to the issue. It brings some sensibility back. So today, members, I hope you'll vote for this bill. Thank you. The member from Sherburne, Representative Knobloch. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, members of the House, I uh, do support this bill. Hope you will support this bill. There are, as uh, members of both sides of the aisle have said, uh, some important things that are funded in this bill. And I guess uh, with respect to my uh, friend, Representative Driskowski, I wouldn't define a deficiency bill quite the way he defined it. I think I define it as a bill where we've got some agencies that need some more money for various circumstances that have arisen. Uh, this bill and the various pieces of the bill have been through all the rel relevant committees. Uh, the appropriations here have been scrutinized in some cases, uh, such as the zoo. Uh, after further uh, looking at it, we've actually slightly decreased the appropriation and decided that no, they, they didn't need as much money as uh, we were originally thought. In addition, members, uh, this bill has, uh, by uh, what happened in the whole salary increase thing, uh, kind of gotten a little sidetracked, uh, gotten delayed because of the uh, dust up between the governor and uh, Majority Leader Bach, uh, but uh, uh, with uh, the help of the speaker and others, I think that uh, we've got an agreement here that everyone can live with. Uh, by voting for this bill, you are decreasing the salaries that were raised, and you're taking the authority back to the legislature, which we've had for many decades, away from the governor so that uh, future governors cannot do this sort of thing again. So members, with that, I'd appreciate your green vote on this important bill. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 106 ayes and 21 nays, the bill is passed as amended and its title agreed to.